Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Today's quick tip is about how to determine your rest time between sets for strength training and oftentimes uh, for strength and hypertrophy training. Very, very similar. Mostly we're going to talk about muscle growth rest times, but for strength, it's almost identical. I'll make sure to point that out to you. So here is the answer. It's three minutes. That's it. See you guys next time. All right, so not really. There's still more video, so I guess I got to fill it with something. Funny enough, we have a variety of these videos actually now, um, how long to rest. And every now and again, as someone who clearly has not watched the video will log on, as you guys know, is common with YouTube, and we'll just type in, it's three minutes. Like, there's literally a comment out there like that. And it's like, holy shit, get out the Nobel Prize ceremony. My man, you just discovered, you know, something better than quantum mechanics. It, a lot of times, this is as far as you get. Recommendations are just like in just certain lengths of time. Say like, you know, one minute, two minutes, you know, one and a half minutes for isolation, two minutes, two and a half for compound, blah, 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 stuff like that. There are some decent heuristics out there, but the problem is that they don't have a way to test against real world scenarios. So you have a heuristic that says, hey, you know, one minute for isolations, two minute for compounds. And then the real world shows up and it's like, what if I'm really big, over 250 pounds? What if I'm really small? I'm under 115 pounds, I'm female. And like when I rest two minutes, I just stand around for a minute and 30 seconds, completely ready to go again. But apparently it says two minutes. Is that really two minutes for me and the guy that's still out of breath and gasping for air after two minutes? Is the uh, is there a purpose to why we're resting or is there some, something magical going on inside the body that just takes two minutes no matter who you are? The answer is that's bullshit. The answer is the body's quite complex. So we need a rule set in which we can derive rest times in any place we are. Luckily, that rule set is so simple that it's actually better to know this than even the heuristics of like a minute here, two minutes there. We can wipe that shit all, like, all the way clean and let you guys in on a secret just for ways, and they're super simple, four little checkboxes you have to go through in your mind, and as soon as you've checked all four, you know if it's time to keep resting or if rest time is over and you're good to go again. So here we are. The checklist goes as follows. Number one, if you're in the gym to build strength or build muscle, the first thing you should ask yourself is, am I still out of breath? <gasps> if you still like that, then your cardiovascular system is going to be the limiting factor on the next set. Question, do you go into the gym to lift weights to build up your cardiovascular system as your number one priority? No, you do not. You're building up your muscular system or your neuromuscular system if you happen to be strength training. So if your cardiovascular system is still a limiting factor, which is exactly what is being evident, when you are breathing super heavy, you are not ready to go again and you should rest longer in almost every circumstance. All right, so still out of breath, don't go yet. Next one, ask yourself, do I feel strong and ready to hit the muscle hard again? If you just did a set of five in squat training super hard, you rack the bar, you guys know what I'm talking about. You have this profound feeling of total body weakness, especially weakness in your leg. And as soon as you sit down, take a few breaths, have a little bit of a drink, you sort of feel out your legs and you're like, hell no, I can barely stand up. Or like, yeah, I don't feel strong at all. Now, a few minutes later, maybe less, maybe more, you get that gusto back. You're like, man, it's time to hit it. Our training partner's like, hey, you ready? And you're like, you know what? I am freaking ready. I am ready. I feel strong again up here and in my target muscles. Like I'm ready to do shit. Soon as you feel that, that box has been checked. Before you feel that, don't go yet because it's too soon. We want to push the muscle in hypertrophy training close to failure, close to its own limits. And if you feel so out of it and so weak and so systemically fatigued that you can't drive that muscle hard, don't bother. You need more rest. That's the fucking purpose of rest anyway, is to make your next set a good set. And if you're too tired to make it a good set, don't do it, right? That's like if your friends ask you like after a 50 hour long work day, we'll go with that, crazy work day, you just finished like 10 projects, you can barely keep your eyes open and barely stay up, right? Your friends are like, dude, you wanna go to the club for five hours? The correct answer is no. You may make bad decisions in your life and say yes, and then fall asleep on one of the club chairs or the couches and the bouncers throw you out. But the reality is, no, you are not recovered enough to go to the club and have a good time. So you go to the club, use $50 for the door fee, another extra $100 for the bouncer, you know, being good with the bouncing staff, $25 a drink, 
all this other bullshit. At the end of the day, if you're going to be putting in that money in five hours of fucking time, you might as well be like up for it, ready, have plenty of energy, plenty of being awake, plenty of focus, and plenty of desire to party. Sometimes you don't want to party. You don't feel like that shit. You're like, I just feel like Netflix. And if you are not recovered enough yet from the week to really feel like you're, you're, you're shit anymore, don't go party. Same idea with the next set. Next set needs to be a party. You need to be there. A good set is a set where you're there psychologically. You'll feel ready. Don't go. A few seconds later, a few minutes later, you'll feel better. You'll be ready to go. Point number three, ask yourself, is the target muscle or muscles, are they going to be the limiting factors for this next set? Or is there a muscle that's a synergist that is a stabilizing muscle that is going to get at me first and limit my set? For example, if you've just done lat pull downs, your lats feel good. You're not out of breath. You feel fucking strong, but your forearms are still on fire. Don't go again yet. Wait until you've shaken them out and massaged them out and then they're good. Because if you go, <clears throat> that next set of lat pulldowns will almost certainly be stopped because you can't grip the bar anymore. And while you took your grip to failure, sweet, your forearms will get bigger, not the goal of the exercise. Your back muscles, which were the goal of the exercise to target, they may be five or 10 reps away from failure because that's how tired your grip was. It acted as a huge limiting factor. If you're about to squat again for your quads and your lower back is still on fire, bro, we don't squat for our fucking lower back. It's a nice benefit, side benefit. But if your quads in another five reps and your lower back says rack the bar, that next set is going to suck. Even if you feel strong, make sure there's no limiting factor muscles that aren't the target muscle themselves. And lastly, that's three points. Point number four is the target muscle itself has to be recovered enough and, and, and feel good enough to do like on average for hypertrophy training, at least five reps. And for strength training, that muscle should be good to hit at least as many reps as your target is, right? So in hypertrophy training, it's especially easy to illustrate. If you just did a set of six in the bicep curl, right? still very hypertrophic. If you rested a few minutes and you're like, I feel good psychologically, no limiting factors, I'm not quite energized yet enough to, I think, do five. I know how tired I am. I'm going to be able to do like four good reps. That's fine. But mostly the research literature has shown that you get your best muscle growth from sets of five reps to 30 reps and sets of one, two, three, and even maybe four reps sometimes just aren't enough volume. It's not enough time spent generating tension by your muscles to count as a real set, enough of one set, enough work done that's a set's worth of work compared to other sets like sets of 10 and 15 and eight and stuff like that. So if you need a little bit extra time to make sure you can get at least five reps per set for hypertrophy, and for sure, if like you have a set of three coming up in deadlifts, if someone's like, you feel pretty good, you're like, yeah, like good enough to do another triple. You're like, not that good. I could do a single. Well, fucking rest longer, right? So as long as you can hit the target reps that you want, which is five or more for hypertrophy or whatever rep range you chose, and you know whatever uh, rep target you have for that strength set coming up, then you're good to go. But remember, it's all the boxes. So anytime you sit down after a set of squats or benches or whatever, ask yourself before saying, okay, I'm ready to go again. Or if a training partner asks you, hey, you ready to go again? You ready for your next set? You're okay. Am I out of breath? Yes, no. Do I feel strong and, and ready to really hit it hard? Yes, no. Is there another muscle group that's going to cramp me up or limit me that's not my target muscle group or target group of the movement? Yes, no. And then lastly, am I going to be able to actually do the number of reps that I want to make that set productive? Prob there's a probability estimate. Like, yeah, pretty much. Or no, definitely not. I'll tell you what, the no definitely nots are much easier to detect. So if you detect those, for sure don't fucking go. Now, the way this plays out is if you've checked the boxes, you can rest longer, but you're good to go for essentially your maximum productivity set as soon as you're ready to go, which means different sets under different circumstances for different people can be wildly different answers, which I'll come back around closing out this video to sort of illustrate to you how this checklist which is the really, truly valid way to determine rest times, can come up with very different answers that don't fall into that, like one to two minutes, bruh, which are, it's a fine answer, but not as good. If we have a power lifter who weighs 280 pounds and he's doing a set of eight in the squat for hypertrophy work, he may not be back to normal breathing, feeling strong, not having a lower back cramp, and being able to do another set of eight for five to seven minutes after his last set. Easy. Whereas if you have a female who's 110 pounds and she's training her calves, precisely five seconds after her last set of calves, 
She was actually never out of breath, feeling nice and strong to do another set of calves. No muscles in the calf raise exercise that limit you other than your calves. That number three disappears altogether. And she got a set of 12 on her last set of calf raises, and she feels golden to go again. And she knows on the set before that, she rested also five seconds. She got 16 reps. So it's 16 reps, then 12 reps. Like, hey, it's not going to be four. It's going to be like maybe 10 or 11, maybe eight or nine. That's all the boxes checked. And that means five seconds of rest can literally be enough to do another productive set. And if you just say two to three minutes for everyone, what happens? Power lifter guy does a set of eight and then a set of two and then a set of zero because he can't recover fast enough. 110 pound calf training girl has to sit around for a minute and a half between sets she could have done all of them within a minute and a half. So just use a simple formula and you're good to go. If you have any questions, please poke them into the comments. If you like what we're talking about, subscribe. If you don't like it, please subscribe anyway. We need money, folks. It's making YouTube, get out of here. Lint, making YouTube videos isn't free. There's ostensibly a camera in front of me and everything. We're inside an enclosure somewhere in a lair. I dare not give away its location. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.